Henry Winter put it best this week. It's the end of an era. Graham Potter has finally been let go from his job after a string of woeful performances. And after last night's evidence, if you were struggling for sleep, just put on match the day. You'd be right at home. <laughs> this is One Kick from Glory. I'm joined by Matthew and Craig. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm going to start off at the top with that story, that breaking story of Graham Potter's final departure. It's felt like a slow march to death, really. Like it was been on the cards for, for weeks and for months. And we've always been wondering if and when would Bowley and the board stop being stubborn? Would they finally relent? Um, for you, Matthew, where did the problems all begin for Graham? Uh, the problems, where do I start? Where do I start? Well, you know what? I'm going to go back to something that we kind of brought up a, f- a few weeks ago when here. Um, the fact that he was promised something, but given something else. Like, so he was promised young English talent. He was promised time. He was promised this, you know, to not lower, but to manage expectations of where we're going to be. That's fair enough. And if we bought in those likes of those players, mm. you know, that were promised a young English talent, you know, up and comers, homegrown to kind of change the culture and be more sustainable. If we actually went ahead and did that, I would be more inclined to be like, you know what, fair enough. You know, he, he's had a go. However, that complete opposite happened. We bankrolled the transfer window in January. We bought the likes, you know, of um, Enzo Fernandez, Jao Felix, uh, Mudrik, to name but a few. And unfortunately, what was the biggest fear was we bought all these players. You know, we've kind of played the transfer window a little bit, but they can't seem to gel. Well, let's be honest, beforehand, we were having a, an issue with certain players not happy with the regime. Too many players that are just too happy with their positions, not being challenged. You know, likes of Mount, um, Mendy and um, um, Havertz, even to this day, are still far too comfortable in the positions, not being challenged and mm. bringing up their game in in some kind of way. Now you've got these new players, in particular the likes of Jao Felix, who try so hard for most of the games. Tried too hard yesterday. Yeah, li- li- <laughs> he's one of the ones, the only ones that is. You know, he's come here, he's here for a what? a loan spell. He clearly liked, there's something about him here that he likes to stay here and wants to play, but you know, it's just not working for him. When he got, when he got donkeys like Havertz sloughing chances next to you, it's just like, who can't even score with his own body? It has to happen to find his hand. It's like, well, what's, well, what am I doing here? Who am I, who am I playing with? Just woeful, woeful, woeful. But he doesn't like help himself. Like the game against the game, the Villa game, you know, his last game, why is he put? Why is he not putting on the suitable players to help us get back in back into the game? Because mm. it wasn't until the second half that we actually perked up a little bit. The first half was absolutely diabolical, not even by Chelsea standards, by football standards. A Sunday league school a school teacher would rip them apart for that kind of performance. That's how bad it was. Damn. I was so angry after that first. I think it's just, it's just another gift. Defensive a kerfuffle between probably two of our jokers of the season. One of our many jokers of the season. Gift the ball to Ollie Watkins. The second goal, Kepa, you gotta do, you gotta do better than that, man. But again, another gift. There's no kind of like jump on to try and get something in the game. They handled us and that. They handled us. But the that gap of with the winnable games between there and there, that's where his problem was. Like to Villa, like Southampton, we should have beaten Liverpool um at, when we went to Anfield. Fulham twice. Um uh, you, you name you name you you find it, but that was that winnable gap of games. We should have got something, and we didn't. I think we only what what won once or twice. Even March was a false dawn. All right, we we played lots of Leeds and Leicester in a bit of a, in a bit of a muck, but um, wasn't didn't exactly promise much. Must be something about months with an M in it where we do pretty well. And now it's April's like back to square one. April Fool's Day didn't get exactly work. There are lots of problems. His decisions, his this lack of like leadership style. I, I sympathise with the fact that the squad he had wasn't exactly what he wanted, but he's, you've given it, so work with it. Freezing out certain players, Mudrik, lack of confidence. If you saw that against Villa, he could not finish that shot, which anyone else would have finished, you know. Except for Havertz. Except for Havertz, where there's also that. Um, Abamyang frozen out of the squad. Um, Fafana was frozen out of the squad. And yet, actually, when he's played, he's been great. I don't get that as well. Just so Is many. It about Wesley or the striker Fafana? Uh, no? Oh, striker, striker Fafana. He's, okay. He hasn't, sorry, he hasn't featured for a while. I don't know why, because he's great when he comes on for us. Um, just, and just again, playing players that, and backing players that aren't giving or just who are just far too comfortable no matter what. They're going to play it regardless. Look at how is Havertz getting 90 minutes week in, week out, and he's not performing. He's barely putting in five out of 10 performances. You know, the, the, the shot, the game at Liverpool, all of the games before, just completely fluffing his chances. We can't keep on living on this May 2021 thing. Mm. 
Mm. It's now April 2023, and in two years, that let's be real, there hasn't been much of a of a of a of a, of a accel- acceleration in his form. At this rate, I'm willing to take 50 million and add-ons for him from some team. I want to I want to touch on Havertz a bit more. I, I want to first you, Craig. I, I know with us, like we we've gone through the. The, the Pepe saga, so to speak. And it's not over because he's on loan, so he could come back and whatever. But we, we've we also been heavily scrutinized for the fee we pay for Pepe and the expectation of what he would deliver. Mm. But when you really analyze it, especially in their league form, I, I think, to be honest, I think Pepe has been a better buy than, than Havertz. But for you, where do you think things have gone wrong for Havertz and why has it just not quite worked out the way everyone would hope? I don't, I don't think he's a striker. It's a position where he plays. Mm. He's not a striker. He's not a number nine. Is he a number 10? But even as a is number he, 10, he wasn't really delivering. Is he a wide player? He's more of a wide player, but he's not a nine, damn nine. Is he Is he like an inverted striker? Like an inverted player? Can, like, can, like, if, if by inverted you mean a bench player, super sub, <laughs> maybe. I feel like, I think his reputation, because he scored the winning goal in the um, Champions League. League final, as Matthew said, I feel like he's been living off that for the last two, three years now. And I think that season, that, that time of the season was way gone. And it cost, it cost the manager, the other manager his job, Tuchel his job, and it cost them Potter's job. Because these managers have had faith in him and he's let them down both times. And I feel like he's not scoring goals. And and you've got Aubameyang, who they bought in the summer on big wages. you got Fofana, who hardly plays. Why didn't, I think Potter's biggest problem was he should have just played Aubameyang in matches. Even have him on the bench, ring on for half an hour, 45 minutes at least, and see what he could do. Because if you give a bad man service, he'll score. He did well at Arsenal. I know towards the end it was a bit sour towards the end him and Arteta because of whatever, but a bad man is a finisher compared to Havertz. He'll score more goals than Havertz. Like, the, like that chance that Havertz missed yesterday, a bad man would have finished it. We say that, but we we saw him at Arsenal his last season miss. <sighs> well, compared, some of the chances that, that Havertz has missed a season, a bad man would have converted most, a majority of them. You'd hope. You would hope, yeah. Mm. But I can't say it's guaranteed. Feel, Not based on what we've seen feel, the last couple I, of years. I feel, like, I feel like the new manager might have to be strict with him. The same way how Mason Mark's not in the squad at the moment. I don't know if he's injured or whatever. He's not injured. Maybe I think he just has to be harsh with um, Havertz and say, if you're not playing well, you, players need to roll up their sleeves and give me something or else I'm going to have to start benching players. Mm. Do you think Potter ever found his best 11? Because to me, I can't even think of what, and it's really funny because I remember when all this transfer business was happening back from the summer when he first started, when Todd Bully started splashing the cash. And then in January when he took <sighs> football manager ex-FIFA to a whole new level, <laughs> just making a mockery of... Tra- I mean, there's even players you've signed which you haven't even played yet. Um, mm. Marlo at Leon, who still kind of started rehab this week. So he should be back fully fit for the rest of the season coming in, in the summer. Uh, Nkunku, who may join, may yeah. not join, depending on what rumours you believe. But... Do you th- where do you, do you think Potter ever found his best eleven, and you think that's really where the hallmarks of the the full failure of his time here began? I think what it with with him is that he co- he chopped and changed like so many times, which is fair enough. You're sort of trying to figure out what your what 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 player works best, who you like here, who you like there, who's in form, who's doing what in training. But it's very hard to pinpoint. You're gonna have to say that March, which was probably his best month, because he didn't lose a single game there. I think the game where he had most players fit, like the likes of missing players like Chilwell and Reese James is a big massive gamble because the backups just don't fit the bill really and truly. So at best he needs those players in the squad. Kevin Kante back yesterday is another big, big plus. It's, it, see, the midfield and defence was never, as bad as sometimes as what they are, it was never really an issue because you had players you could rely on with likes of, say, um, I don't know, Silva, uh, James, and then and then Chilwell, even Kovacic sometimes were put in a good shift. It's when things got a little bit further forward is where he kind of struggled. He never got comfortable figuring out what his best forward strategy was. But it was that's where our most bloated area was with the likes of uh, Mudrik, Fernandez, Felix, uh, Pulisic, Ziyech. Um, they haven't played for a while. Um, Sterling, oh God, I forgot Sterling. Um, Mount, uh, F- striker for Fana. You know, the list goes on and on and on. And I just don't, when you're having a mix up of all these players, when you're moving them around so many times, and you're still playing the same ones, you know, two things would happen. And this is what happened. And I noticed in the last couple of games, definitely, is that confidence is at an all time low because you're just not getting played where one minute you get, you start, and when next minute you're not even in the squad, it hasn't, he doesn't get enough time to put an arm around those players and be like, you can go ahead and you can strike these goals. You're telling me that Mudrick goal, I couldn't score that? 
against Sevilla, the tamest shot you've ever seen. He st- that shot, believe it or not, guys, when he hit it, the ball's still moving even now. And that was a couple of games ago. That's <laughs> how bad the shot was. I've got to say though, I think he tried to do it because Theo Orcott did a goal like that against Slavia Prague way back in for Arsenal, maybe 2011. I don't know yeah. it might be that season, but he did a sinner breakaway goal, hit the shot first time, bottom corner, placed it perfectly. But you know, when you're going to do that, you've got to you've got to pick the corner, and you've got to even though he's a, he's passed it in, he's passed it in with precision and a bit of power. Yeah, and that didn't have it. But I want us to do this as, as an experiment. I'm on Chelsea's website right now. Those of you, I'm on my phone, and I want us to pick your best eleven. Scrolling through this website is quite hilarious because it just feels like it's never it's ending. Um, it starts with Kepa and ends with uh, Noni Maduke. But let's start at the back. Who are you having in goal? So your options are Riza Bilaga, so Kepa, Bettinelli, Mendy, or Slanina, who's a youngster. They have to be special K at the moment. Right, Kepa's in goal. Back four. Who are we having? We've got lots of options. Centre backs, you've got Badashile, Thiago Silva, Chalabar, Koulibaly, Fofana. So who's your two from those four or those five? Let's take, I'm definitely having Thiago Silva. Okay. Probably win our best player of his year. And I'm also going to take, who the other, sorry? Badishili, Chalabar, Koulibaly or um, Wesley Fofana. I'm going to take Wesley Fofana when Wesley he's fit. Wesley and, okay. When he's fit, he's a monster. Wesley, Thiago Silva. Right back. Right back, well. Pff. And then left back, Chilwell or... You got Chiwo, Aspilicueta, or Cucurella? Oh, Cucurella. It's not Sideshow Bob. It's a Chiwo. Nice Chilwell and easy. Is uh, easy. That's an easy back five. Okay, midfield. Now it gets interesting. So you got the choice between Enzo Fernandez, Nicolo Kante, Mateo Kovacic, Ruben Loftus Cheeks, Mason Mount, Dennis Sakari, <laughs> <laughs> Conor Gallagher, Carnage Chiquema. Who's your. Who's your you're, are you playing the midfield three? What you're, uh, midfield three. So you're yeah. going four three three as your formation. Four three three. Good right, he's your three. Got to be Kante in there. We Golo just, Kante. We, we look better. We look better when he's there. It's more secure. Where's he sitting set, at the base or is he on one? The... He's at the base. He's he's at his best point where he can just okay. sweep. Kante at the base. Who else you got? So you got Kante there. I like the idea of who else we got? Fernandez, Kovacic, Ruben Loftus Cheek, Mount Zachariah Gallagher, and Carney Chukwuema. So bad for not putting him out in there because I know how good he can be, but I'm not. He's he's not he's not there. He's not there. So it's gonna be Kante. I'm gonna put in. Ah, oh, so many damn names. This is actually really hard. Now you know how Potter felt. <laughs> <laughs> and you never even found no one. Pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> um, three. So read the names again. It's tough, man. Enzo Fernandez, Mateo Kovacic, Ruben Loftus Cheek. Ma- Mason Mount Dennis <laughs> Zachariah Conor Gallagher And Cardi Chiquema uh, I don't know who I'll pick Who do you, you pick Craig As your midfield um, to add, it's to, tough. As a two To I'll join put, Kante I'll put, I'll put Kante Enzo Fernandez Yeah, yeah. And um, Who is it Conor Gallagher Mason Mount Cardi um, Chiquema Dennis Zachariah Loftus Cheek And Kovacic Kovacic, that's a, that's a solid three. Okay. So Kovacic, Enzo and things. So I was going to put in Kovacic, but no, no, not Kovacic. Enzo, Kante, and actually, you know what? I, out of those ones, I don't trust much of them apart from maybe Kovacic, maybe. So okay. go on then. Enzo, Kante, Kovacic. And then your front three, your options are Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, Christian Pulisic, João Felix, Mikhailo Mudrik, Raheem Sterling, Armando Broja, Hakim Ziyech, David Fofana, Kai Havertz, and Noni Maduke. Berlin, Felix, Fofana. Wow. Oh. Who would you have as your front three? If you were to pick one. Lots of options. Too many options. I'm there for the middle. Mm-hmm. On the right, Sterling. On mm-hmm. the left, um, who, who, who's the options on the... You got Pulisic, you got Felix, Madrid. Felix, 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 Felix. So Felix, Felix left, Aubameyang middle, Sterling right. And you had Felix left, Sterling right, Sterling right uh, and Fofana, Fofana in the middle. All right. That's a strong team. Well, if only Graham Potter had tried that for a couple of games this season, you never know. I don't think he ever know. actually did. No, he never did. To be fair, the midfield didn't help. But at the same time, now that he's back... That's what I would have liked to have seen because mm. Felix would at least do something. I think 
I, I think Sterling sometimes Sterling can do well down the right, especially with Reese behind him. Um, Kante, you're always going to be able to trust in the midfield. And you know what, with Fafana, whenever he comes up, all right, no, we haven't necessarily won, but for what we've seen is good. So you owe him to kind of, we've bought him in, you know, you kind of owe it to give him a try. If you at least put him on and the result wasn't coming away, that's that's your defence. You know, I tried yeah. something new, it didn't work. Stop putting this donkey up there because he, he clearly can't finish his dinner. Mm. You know who the donkey is? Could be many of them. <laughs> Don't have to name names, but you know who you are. Um, and obviously, yeah, it's been a weird one. Like, do you, do you think Potter ever had the dressing room at Stamford Bridge? I don't think he ever did. I think a lot of these players, like, coming in with European reputation, winning wherever they've been, used to kind of, like, you know, for someone like, you know, Tuchel beforehand, who's known to be very difficult to work with, and other players around used to other managers with a little bit more, you know, culture, like, you know, ex worldly experience with them. Potter kind of feels like, you know, he's still very much in his ascendancy. I mean, he will, I, f I don't think this would be it for him. I just think this was a bit too much for him. He was, an, and I don't think we truly, you know, sometimes we met with what we promised him, but it was too big a job at a very crucial time in, in the season when he came in, because I think he came in about September, October time. I can't remember exactly when Tuchel got let go, where results weren't working. We're still very much in the cups, Champions Leagues. League was, I don't know, we weren't, we definitely weren't where we are now. Um, but he, I don't, I, I, on that at that point, I do feel for him because, you know, he's clearly trying to imprint some kind of thing here. But going from Brighton to Chelsea, considering what we've had before is, is that Chelsea needs a Chelsea manager. And what is a Chelsea manager? A Chelsea manager is someone with a bit of bite. A Chelsea manager is someone with that ruthless aggression. A Chelsea manager has a will to kind of win. They kind of have, you know, look at the past the manager we've had, like, you know, the Contes, Ancelotti's, Mourinho's, the Tuchel's, um, even down to the side with his cigarettes down the side. You know, they, they need to have some kind of personality to deal with that wacky owner that we used to have. And it seems to me we have another wacky owner as well, albeit with a much, with so many pens filling out all these checkbooks all the time. But you need to have a kind of, a per not so much of a personality, but they're going to have a bit of a character behind them because it's a, it's a fun, I love my club, but it's a funny old club. It really is a funny old club. It's very... I know we set that blueprint for spending a lot of money and adapting a culture, but we're always kind of like, something always seems to surprise us with this club. Every single day or every time he's checking the deck of the tabloids, we're doing something. Transfer bans, oligarchs, shady deals, getting these funky deals across the line. There, we, 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 do, we do things our own way. And when you come in, you have to be ready for the fact that you're going to have to weather that storm wherever you come. I just don't think with Potter's, somewhat more humble and simple upbringing. I don't think he was ever ready for, for the, he wasn't ready for that kind of smoke. He really, I don't think he was, you know, unless we were truly willing to change a culture that we've had for the past 20 years, where we're going for complete slate of, we're going to start again from the absolute ground up with what you want and give it four or five, maybe even six years, you know, we'll assess where you are at the moment. I think for a lot of fans who are used to win in on a regular basis, it was an a, a expectation, an alteration of expectations that maybe a lot of them weren't ready for. So the next guy who comes in is coming into a very kind of difficult position because we need someone who's going to come in and just, I don't know, like kind of just give some, give some back. It's like being in a class with a bunch of clowns where it's just like, you got to let it know from the very get-go that you, this is your house. This is your yard. Mm. So, you know, run your thing. Run it. Yeah. I mean, I think it's quite interesting that an article came out this week just talking about the end of Potter's era. And I think what some of the sad things about it is that, you know, behind his back, some of the, some of the players refer to him as Harry. Harry Potter. It's just not acceptable. Is I think the worst man? thing was that, um, you know, when, because the squad was so big, some of the players had to get changed out in the, get changed for training in the, outside the cha the changing rooms. I can, like I heard um, Mudrik and Madi Kelly, they had to get changed outside. I think the other sad thing is that they didn't even have enough seats for the players when they had the team briefing, some of them just sitting on the floor. Cause I mean, I think that's just, that's just, that's just pathetic. For a Premier League club. 
But not only that, like when you think about the well beings of the players, like they are people. Like mm. you, you couldn't imagine going into a workplace environment where you start a new job, they ain't got a desk for you, they ain't got a chair for you, they ain't got a computer for you, they don't even have your name, badge, or your pass. Some of our jobs, to be honest, our passes take a bit of time to kind of arrive, not pointing any fingers at any organizations that may or may not be affiliated with my past work history. But some of the times, <laughs> the pass take a while to arrive. Sometimes six weeks into a job or we'll leave that for now. <laughs> yeah, work very hard sometimes, <laughs> but um, it's just not, but it's not what you want. You, you want to feel like you're part of an organization, especially for those younger players. Like, you know, they, they want to develop their careers. They want to really excel. They've taken this opportunity to come to this club. Like Maddie Kelly didn't have to make that move. Um, he could have stayed at PSV and he was mm. doing really well. Modric, we all know where he should have gone. But at the end of the day, it is what it is, Kerr. It is what it is. <laughs> I hope you're happy over there in blue. Um, uh, you know, 007 and all that. But like for you, Craig, do you think that with the wider, longer term, or even like short term implications now for what Chelsea have done with bringing all these players in, letting Potter go, like Matthew said, they need a strong personality to come in that gets what it means to be 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 Chelsea, as I said. They, be, uh, they need a proper Chelsea, proper Chelsea manager to come in. What would you think is the is the first main job for that new person and how are they going to get things back on track? He's going to have to have a massive bonding session with one of the players he's got. He's going to have to sell players some weeks. Some weeks he'll play, some weeks he won't play. You've got, you got a massive squad, isn't it? Crazy squad. And like, how are you going to keep all those players happy? 31 player egos or how many players in that squad? How are you going to keep everybody happy? And the players like Mudge is confident of his shot because every game he plays, he gets taken off at half time. I have a half time and get taken off in the second half. How is he gonna get how's he gonna become a better player? How's he gonna improve? Players like that Muddy Kayley guy who came from PSV was doing very well. He hardly played for Chelsea. He, he played well for the under 21s the other day, scored two goals, got a couple of assists. So he must be thinking maybe I made a, a bad decision on coming to Chelsea. Maybe what he should have done was he should have come to Chelsea in the summer, gone out on loan back to PS3 to the end of the season, or got a loan to the Premier League Club or something and then Check out the team, maybe come in the summer fresh. But you see, if 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 there was better planning behind Chelsea's business this January, that mm. is exactly what they could have done. Mudrik, you say, you know, we'll keep him. But uh, maybe Mudrik, you say, okay, let's see. Two training sessions, he's not quite ready. He's not got his finish. Okay, let's learn him out. Maddie Kelly, same thing, learn him out. Like, mm. But I, I mean, the biggest thing, Ziyech, that, mm. that, that, that should have been done. The PSG one, isn't it? Yeah, it should have been PSG done. One, yeah, he, yeah. Wanted, he wanted out. He wanted out. And look, he hardly does. plays now. He does because he definitely wants out now. <laughs> so yeah, but it's like you're saying. You're right that, that they do need to get the right person to kind of focus on these players' careers. They got lots of young players who are on super max contracts. They ain't going anywhere cheap. Mm. Like, even if they want to leave in the summer, like it's. I don't even know how clubs would even buy some of those players in the summer. Like if, eight if, year contracts. Like, what do you offer? They throw contracts. Like, like <laughs> what's the acceptable fee? Like if you wanted to say if someone to prize Madrid, if you're Liverpool. And you thought, well, I'll take a punt on him. How are you going to do it? I'm more likely to keep someone like Mudry, but a whole other bunch of players that can go for a lot. I mean, they'll be easier to let go. They'll be easier. The list is very, very long, but I'm willing to take that take that bite to allow, kind of A, balance the books, and B, give a chance to maybe bring some new, more you know, sustainable signings in. But the, the other issue of that is, if you're a player look from the outside looking in right now, so say, yeah. for example, they you guys thought... Um, Let's say Caicedo. Say you're like, okay, we want to bring in like Caicedo because we want to strengthen that midfield. We want to kind of, because Kante's contract's up end of the season. We're not mm -hmm. quite sure if he's going to sign. Let's say we want to get a player and that's a replacement for him. It's going to give us that solid base so Enzo can do some a different role in the team mm. at the base of midfield and not be the anchor, but actually can be the progressive passer. Say you go for, for Caicedo. He'll probably take the deal because it's a move to a big club. But on the balance of things, looking at how this season's playing out so far, if you're his advisors, would you really say to him to go there? Because I wouldn't. I wouldn't either. And unless there's clarity on that squad, I wouldn't. If you're a player watching in, unless you, unless it's the money mm. and the league, that's a big, big, uh, you know, attraction of both of them together. Like, okay, it's Premier League. I want to go Premier League. I, I take my chances if I start. But otherwise, it's it's a risk. I don't think I'd take. If it was Potter, if it was Potter at the helm, I'd hundred percent understand. But now that he's gone, we and we sort of know who our manager is. It kind of also depends who's at the helm. Whereas, like you know, by the end of 2024, 20, 25, no, 2023, 20, 24 season, we will be here. Like certain managers have that kind of pull where it's like, you come in, we'll, you'll see a difference where we're going to be in Europe, we're going to be competing on this by the end of the thing. So 
It also, I can, Potter, if he was still there, 100% agree he wouldn't do it. But a different manager? We never but know. But then the other issue is, yeah, yeah, right, a different manager would, make it, would have a different impact. But then the bigger question is, um, how are you going to create space for those players? Because right now there's no space for no players. There's no, there's barely space for the players you have to play. Like mm. Pulisic barely plays. Sterling got brought on off the bench the other day, yesterday. And he just looks lost. Mudrik, you know, it's adapting. Ziyech is still here, but my man rather be in Paris chilling and whatever. You just, you have too many players that are woefully underused and out and it's not fitting anymore. So I, I think you're right. I, I, the right managers are coming in would attract people and give a project for them to get behind. But the reality is there's no space for them. So until you sell people, like like I would recommend Conor Gallagher to Crystal Palace just because I think he just did great over there. He did great, yeah. And he hasn't quite worked out for him back at Chelsea. I'm not saying he's not good enough, but I just think- Chelsea's not for him. The structure is not quite right. There's a player there, but the structure is just not quite right. And maybe a different manager might get a different tune out of him. Um, but- Unfortunately, that hasn't been the case. Speaking of managers, who would you who would you back for the next Chelsea manager? I was hearing Lampard might come in as a caretaker. Lord have mercy. Maybe him and John Terry. <laughs> you never know. Never go back to an ex, guys. Never go no, back no, to no, an no. ex. No, can't I, work I, sometimes. I heard I heard him linked to Luis Enrique, the um, Spanish manager. Nagelsmann's been linked as well. Yeah, well, Nagelsmann doesn't want a new club until that till the summer. Because he's got a big payoff. Bayern Munich has to pay off his contract. So if he takes a job now, then they have to pay. The club that signs him have to pay Bayern Munich his compensation. Also depends on other clubs we're looking. Because yeah. you know, by the end of a football year, you never know who's going to be a managerial, managerial, managerial vacancies, you know. Robert didn't have, Robert didn't have a managerial vacancy. And this is, Tottenham have one. Tottenham have one. Tottenham have one. Tottenham have one. Tottenham Tottenham one. So a couple of the clubs might be looking for a new managers in the summer. PSG might be looking for a new manager. Mm. But they're struggling at the moment. So... Yeah, maybe Pochettino. I don't know if he'll go to Chelsea because of the whole Tottenham thing. But you never know. Money's Honestly, money, isn't it? He's, but also he's unemployed, isn't it? A he job is a job. Sometimes you'll take a job. Mm. Might, he might need it. But who who would you want to have coming in to the helm? Temporary or full-time? Who's your next manager? <laughs> I don't do no temporary, no full. Who's your next? Who do you want? I mean, the idea of having someone like, somebody young and kind of like fresh, like a Nagelsmann is an, is an exciting prospect. Um, but like I said, he's not, he's not looking. And I did, he did say he wanted to come to the Premier League. He yeah. did also say that. So I'll be in, I'll be, I would like to have him because he's, he's different from like many of the managers we've had before, but he does have a proven record because before Bayern, he was at, what was he before Bayern? Leipzig. Yeah. Leipzig. And he did a lot with, not a lot. So it'll be interesting to see what he can do with a lot and who fits his. I get the feeling he's the kind of guy who knows what he wants, like who fits my bill and who's going to go, who's going to stay where. Unfortunately, we've had with Potter is he cut so much. He forgot about certain players. And let's be real with Nagelsmann, they ain't going to be calling him Julie or Julian or whatever or something. He's not going to have that kind of nickname until he wants it. You know, They're not doing that to Jose and they're definitely doing that to Tuchel. You just take Jose back. For one more, for one more, to bring in a winning mentality. Spin the block one more time. What, 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 what's the worst that could happen? Possi you know, possibly. I do. I think you could do it definitely because what I think, or what, um, this is interesting. It was on the fan cams. I didn't think about was that he can install what it means to be a winning mentality. He won so much when he was with us, and he's won wherever he gone. He would have won at Spurs if he didn't let him go for that blooming final. He's a winner. He's a winner no and, matter what way you look at it. And aren't we all glad that Spurs did let him go? Exactly. The most Spurs <laughs> thing they could do and fire a, a cup winning manager, a cup that he won with Chelsea twice, like with Man is, United. Yeah. I mean, what were you thinking, guys? Anyway, I would spin the dice one more time. But the trouble is that is that it's, it, it's an inability to move on into the future. Because I mean, if we're going to be going on with this whole sustain, sustainability thing, which is what Bowley said he's about, and I think a lot of fans would like to see what it could do because we're seeing likes we're doing with Liverpool and Arsenal now. The whole sustainability thing can work. And, you know, with the amount of money we've spent, we want to look like a more, uh, you know, PLC friendly company, then we're going to have to rein in the spending a little bit. Um, going along that, well, it's not a sign of moving on. And he does demand, jo Jose makes demands. He wants, I want this, this, this and this. So I think we've got to step away from that kind of, I mean, that kind of manager. So the idea of a Nagelsmann who's good with working with very little does intri intrigue me. And because the Bundesliga, I mean, seeing, watching the Bundesliga sometime, you know, he's, he did, 
I mean, because they're second in the league and he did get, he did knock out PSG. So he must know something what he's doing. I mean, I mean, I mean, of all the names, he's the one I'm intrigued by, like the most. I don't think Pochettino. I don't. I don't think. I think you're right. I don't think you'll come unless for the right fee. Um, Zidane will bring the similar problems to Mourinho, making all these demands with money. But you know what? So, there, there is one name you hmm. haven't said. I don't want to know your thoughts on this, Craig. As far there's one name you haven't said who is available. He would fit. He's a young manager. He would fit the sort of ethos that um, the Todd Burley and the group are putting together at Chelsea. He's good at working with young with young players. He has a lot to prove, and he has got some level of success. Reputation might not carry all the players, but I think he's got something there to, that would intrigue some of the younger players. Brendan Rodgers. I know. <laughs> I knew it. You were I thinking knew it. it. <laughs> You know how he dropped in that? <laughs> Brendan Rodgers. I thought you were talking about Patrick Vieira for a minute. I was like, I thought as well, like Patrick Vieira. And it's Arsenal. Nah, about, I didn't it? really think about him, to be honest. Would you take Vieira at Chelsea? <sighs> it wouldn't work, but anyway. I could, I'll okay. swallow my pride for it. I would swallow my pride. He did do well with Palace up until like the final moments, but yeah. I'd rather him than Rodgers, to be honest. Let's 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 move on from Chelsea talk. I think we've we've given you guys enough. It's <laughs> just about enough today. Um, let's talk about Crystal Palace. Nice little two one win. Late goal, John Philippe Mateta off the bench. That's my bet for golden month. By the way, swivel and finish that touch, <sighs> the composure, the finish. We've seen Pod- Roy Hudson's back and. Kind of felt like the sacking of Vieira might have been a bit premature. Also felt like going back to Roy was a bit um, uninspired would be the right phrase to use. However, can't argue with the results so far. He seems to have really galvanised the team. I mean, they had 31 shots to, I think it was to seven or to nine of, the, of their opponents at the weekend, which says a lot considering they barely managed to have a shot on target in one of Vieira's last games. Actually, they didn't have a shot on target in Vieira's last game. From that to 31 shots at goal. Um, that, I think it was like tw- uh, 12 or something on target, but it was a, it was good numbers for what, what they were trying to achieve. But um, for you, Craig, how do you think um, life for Palace has started out now with Hodgson in the second go around? And will it be enough to keep them up? They'll stay up, 100%. They've got, they've got good players. They've got Zahar, they've got Eze, they've got Elise, they've got... Um... Edward, Edward, yeah. Edward, they've got a good defence, they've got um, Gway and they've got Anderson, they've got a good goalkeeper. They've got a decent team. They've got and they've got Ayu as well, it does a does his job. Um does a job. He does, does a job, job for the team. Not, not great, but it does a job. You got um they have Jeffrey Slop. See, they got some decent players around, so you got so I feel like they'll stay up. I feel like if they if they want to continue next season, they have to build for the future with a manager, get a, a young manager and I had had Vieira before and just say to the new manager, like, this is the score that we got. Get a goal. They need a goal scorer. They really need a goal yeah. scorer. Mm. I'm, I'm disappointed in Edouard, to be honest, because last season, the way he started, I remember there was all the links of Edouard to Arsenal from Celtic. And it's like, not really sure, not sure, not sure. There's, it just reminded me, he just looked too much like Lacazette. And obviously, yeah, that was when, like I said, it was starting to stink out the joint. Obviously, like, obviously, he really stunk out the joint last season. My goodness, goodness gracious me. I'm glad he's gone. But now he's scoring again. You've seen, him in, you've seen him in... Let's, let's not talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the skin fade is back. Beard is looking fresh. He's banging in goals for fun. Thank you. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't have given us five goals last season, no? Five more goals, no? No? Anyway. <laughs> Five more goals in the running would have been top four, you know. Five more. Just five. Five. Anyway. Yeah, but with Edward, I just, I, I thought when he started, especially his work in the box, you know, he's, he's, some of his touches and his turns and the goals he was getting, I was like, okay, it's a tidy play here. In the mm. box, looked surty. Outside the box, eh, didn't quite have enough. Like hold up play was non-existent. Link up play was was a bit higgy hagger. Mateta has the same problem. He's not really the best at holding the ball up, to be fair. But his link-up play was better. It's really weird because I, I, I look at um, Edouard and Mateta and I feel like it was our conundrum we had with Arte- Lacazette and Aubameyang. It's like you've got two individual players. You have the, the, their best attribute. If you give it to the other one, would make them a complete striker. 
<laughs> no, it's, it's true. true. It's true. Yeah, it's plays true. to Lacazette's finishing. You're there set. You had <laughs> Lacazette's hold up play to Bamiang's all round. Bamiang's game. You're set. Mm. Mm. Like literally, their strength was the other per- their other person's weakness. But um, such is the case sometimes. But I think like going forward, obviously that for Palace, you mentioned they need to have a goal scorer, but they've got two strikers there that you'd think realistically between now and end of the season, you'd want to get at least six goals a piece. Mm. I think that's that's fair. Mm. in the games left uh, probably more but if they can each get six goals each that'll be enough to kind of lay a marker down for next year but what do you think that for Mateta and um, Edward, what do you think they need to really do now to make score it work score goals work on their finishing every day in training mm. and score goals I think if Palace get at least 38 points or 38 to 49 39 points they'll stay up because mm. the way how the bottom the, the bottom three is so sort of like each like from 11th all the way down to the bottom, a team could lose and they go straight down to the bottom. So it's very tactical. They've got 30 the points there because they're behind us. Are they? 30 points. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, they, they, like, if they get a couple of wins, they get into the top half of the table, that would be a decent yeah. season for them. True. But I feel like the owners, when they sat the year, I was like, oh. but Hodgson's a good a safety bet. Like, he he, he knows what he's doing. He's, he's, been a, he's a club legend. He's been there for years. So he'll keep them up. And in the summer, they have to look for a good manager, a decent manager to start again. Mm. But they might lose Wilfred Zaha in the summer, so they have to rebuild. Um, voice to yeah. voice friend. They've always friends lose Zaha. No, he's out of contract. Oh, contract. He oh yeah. yeah. So, so he might go in the summer. So mm. they have to... Re- they, well, they got Eze. I think Eze and... Um, Elise. Elise can replace him anyway. Mm. Mm. They definitely will need to get another talisman, you, you'd think. And and maybe with the, the money off the wages... You say that, but then you still got to pay the transfer fee. And obviously, they've not really invested as much money. Mm. When you think about it, post Hodgson to now, obviously they spent, they bought quite, bought in. I think they spent 150 million mm. pounds, but they lost a lot of first team players. So really, when you balance it out, they haven't really invested that much. And for what the owner's ambition is, which is to be a set mid table team and start looking up at the top eight and dream of top six. If that's what your ambitions are, you gotta put your money in because we, we saw that for years with um Everton trying to make it and obviously now they're 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 like well, falling from grace. <laughs> they're dangling, you know, they're, they're fighting for their lives out here, you know, mm. uh, <laughs> at the bottom of the table. We've seen Wolves try it and come close and this year they're just not it's fallen up falling off a lot. Did it a couple of years Aston ago. Villa done it as yeah, well. Many um, years ago. It's yeah. not easy. Yeah, it's not easy. Then. Brentford, Brentford are bucking the trend and doing quite well, but to, to maintain that season yeah. in, season out, is, is to break into that top eight is hard. They, they, they need, and if they get into, if Brentford get into Europe this season, like Brentford or Brighton get into Europe this season, they have to invest heavily because their yeah, score's yeah. going to be, and if they lose Tony in the summer, like for suspension or whatever happens, then they're going to struggle. Yeah. Other clubs will be sniffing, even yeah. like, like if Brighton might lose Matoma because Ivan mean, Caicedo for Brentford, it could be, it's going to be definitely going to be Tony. Got so Ferguson like, as well for Everton. You know, yeah. yeah so not Everton, Ferguson for, um, Brighton as well, yeah. The yeah. Kids, uh, They'll look around. Mm. They will look around. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. Obviously, but on that note for Palace, like who obviously thinking forward to the next season. Obviously, Hodgson will, will we we think because I mean they were tw- they were twelfth anyway. We, yeah. we, it's just they had a weird run of fixtures. They didn't quite get the goals or the wins and the results when it went against them. Performances were close, but just not quite enough under Vieira. And obviously they had a lot of stuff behind the scenes which didn't quite work out, unfortunately. But next manager for next season, who would you pick? And it can be a manager that's currently in a job. Ooh, who would, I, who would go to Crystal Palace? I think, well, Crystal Palace thrive off like youthful energy because mm. I think they're a very youthful club. I think the location kind of helps out in that as well. So I think they, their manager's got to be someone younger with a little bit of experience. I mean, Brendan Rodgers doesn't sound like a bad idea. He knows how to, he's he he knows how to get to a cup final. He's used to being fight. He's he's used to fighting at the top, further at the top half of the table. He's been at Leicester for a while now. Let's be real. He's been yeah. there for what? Four years. Four fourish fair, years. But then there was also talk from of like I think from even last season maybe they should have let him go because his performances really kind of fell off a cliff last year and they haven't really recovered. I think they had financial issues because of 
obviously lockdown and stuff. But yeah, yeah, it's not about I me. Mean, he did half. He he got very close at Liverpool, but he did very well at Swansea. He's done well. I'm not going to talk Celtic because everyone can do well at Celtic. He did do no, good. Well, at, not everyone does well at Celtic. Some men just go there and fail. But um, he did really well. He did do really well, and he he did get to uh, an FA Cup final and two cup two finals in the space of three months, beating Chelsea and Man City. Yeah, and he's competed in. He's competing in Europe. So if you're looking to be a solid mid-table club to looking to get to Europe, he's not a bad bet. Mm. Who would you have have done? I think Rodgers would have done a good job. Rodgers or Lampard? Oof. I think Rodgers would have Lampard. Sure, yeah. Rodgers would have Lampard. Or, I don't know, Lampard is the kind of manager, he's good with young players. He did When he was at Chelsea, to be fair, he did well with like a mile, mile got minutes. He did well with no money and youth for players. Yeah, he did well with Mike. He did well with Tomori. He did well with um to Abraham. That, Abraham. He did well with the other guy. What's his name? Um, no. Lamptey. Then Lampty. he sold him in January. He did well. So he did Brian. well with some of the young players. So, but I don't know. If, oh, I don't know with Lampard, man. He, oh, he struggled no, he, at Everton. Yeah. He struggled at Chelsea toward the second season. He 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 done well at the Derby half a, uh, one season at Derby. Gone to a final. And should, then they should have got promoted though. Should have got promoted. And then he came to Chelsea that on the back of that. Maybe he should have gone to another maybe he should have stayed at Derby for another two more seasons at least. And try, and then go to Chelsea afterwards. I just got you just remind me of another championship. He's a championship manager, but he is doing really, really well. So I think Company. Next, I'd say it, Vincent Company. He's doing really well at Burnley. It's yeah. the step up from, you know, to a club that kind of I mean, they're a great club to kind of model your thing after because they're a club that has a lot of young young players that be model to model on what they want to get to mm. that furthers up half of the table. I mean, whether he'll last a full four or five seasons, I don't know, but he'll be a great it'll be a great start because a the players are learning from someone who knows the game, who knows how to win, and b it's a chance for him to work his way around a different set of players and a different culture. So I think Vincent well, Company is not. A, but do you think uh, he'll leave Burnley? If Burnley gets promoted this season, he might stay at Burnley. And look, that is and true. Get, that's the problem. He'll, stay up, he'll definitely stay at Burnley. Depends what thinker that will. Um, the only, only call I can see, I can see him going to like a. If he continues the way he's continuing right now, doing well at Burnley next, do well in the Premier League next season, I can see maybe a top, top maybe top five or top six club looking at him. Well, from the Premier League, yeah. I can't see him going. I can't see him going to a top four club right now. It's too too early in his career, and, and you don't want to tarnish it. If if it goes wrong, it tarnishes his legacy. Like so, mm. I guess yeah. he can go to like mm. a maybe a, I don't know, club, a struggling club and do well. He could do well at like a Leeds. I think it, I was, or Forest. Forest, yeah. Leeds or Forest. Well, I mean, there's a, there's also talk about Steve Cooper so job potentially being at a threat. By the Again. weekend, um, there was even talk saying that if they lo- lost the game the other day, but if they would lost that, he might lose his job. And obviously, um, that's a sad possibility if it comes true. Because I think he's doing a really good job, and he I think they're going to be job. fine. I don't think the owners should panic because of a couple of blips in performances. I think they they have enough in their squad to stay up, and I think they will stay up. On that note, would you, if he was to lose his job, would you take would you back Cooper as a good move for Palace for next year? Yeah. He's good with young. He worked with the under, was the under 19s? Yeah, won the World Cup. Won the World yeah. Cup under 19. He worked, he worked with Foden, Smith Rowe. What else did he do? He worked with a lot of the, all the yeah. Dominic Solanke, yeah. all the young players coming through now. He worked with them. So he knows the English system very well. So he could get a couple of them players here and there and and, and do something. Like Go he did with Gibbs yeah. White as yeah, well. Yeah. Gibbs White is a good example. Yeah. One player that's really let me down this season for Forest has been um, Lingard. Oh, he's thought, injured, isn't he? I thought he would have done well. But he's thought, injured. Yeah. <laughs> Shame that. Yeah. There's <laughs> not much he can do. Is he dramatic? When he played it, I thought he would, he would light off of there. I thought he got a fresh start for Man United, got away from Manchester, got to Nottingham and needs a new change and everything. And then he could try and establish himself there, get into the World Cup squad. Nothing didn't work yeah. out for him. It was okay. But yeah, it, it, when you compare- but If his, you compare Gibbs White to that's Lingard, what I was gonna say, yeah. Gibbs White has done more. Yeah, for, I was going to say, yeah. For he's their main man, I would say, him and- um, Brennan Johnson. Brennan Johnson, yeah. yeah. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I think those two have highlighted, for me, those two highlight how much Lingard is off the pace, but not only Lingard, how much Andre Ayew is off the pace. I mean, you compare <laughs> what those two players are doing compared to those other two players, like, mm. listen- why did we bring in Are you Lingard? It's just not quite happened. But you're right; it's it's unfortunate for him, but it happens sometimes. You know, yeah. injuries, poor performances. Um, Mitrovic's been banned. 
eight games pushing the referee. Bruno Fernandes has still not even been charged for doing uh, pushing an assistant. I uh, remember that happened in a game. Very surprised that no one talks about <laughs> Bruno Fernandes. I was going to call him his nickname. <laughs> <laughs> but like, what do you think about that like news? Obviously, there's a lot of split views on how people feel, find it and whether it's excessive or whether it's not excessive enough. But how do you think about it? I think Inca Van is fair enough. He made a mistake. He apologised. He's going to push the referee. But Bernard Fernandez did it and got away with it. Assistant referee got away with it. It's like one law for one player, one law for another player because they play for a big club. Not right. Howard Webb is back. So, I got to say, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying Howard Webb is the reason Fernandez has not been charged. All I'm saying is Howard oh, Webb is back. back. <laughs> and Fernandez has not been charged. <laughs> if you want to leave the team, that's on you. What did you think about that news? I think eight games, I mean, for eight games in the Premier that's a lot. That's like, mm. what, a good chunk of games between here and there that you're missing out, including an international break. So, and especially someone as pivotal as him to them at the moment, you know, that's their talisman and losing. He shouldn't have done it. I'm not defending that. Talisman or not, you know, these rules are in place, but he got the carrying them out against every other player. And like you said, against the likes of, say, Bruno Fernandes, who I still think we've even had an apology for, you know, I don't think it's in his remit to apologise. He's still going on as if nothing has nothing and that didn't even happen. It goes back to that whole thing of big team bias. It doesn't work, whether it's for the World Cup or the Euros. It definitely doesn't work for the fact that when, you know, if your player does wrong, he should be punished. So I think eight games is enough. I, don't, I mean, I heard on the radio, the, um, I think the Referee Association was saying that maybe he could have got more or should have got more. Um, but yeah, eight games, that's a, that's a lot, man. That's like nearly a quarter of your games. So... No, I think eight games is enough, but Fernandez, I'm waiting. I am waiting. Well, waiting. you're going to be waiting a very, very long time. Yeah. Um, welcome to the show, Mark. Are you with us? Are you here? Are you live? Hey, can you hear me? I can. How are we doing? Uh, we're good. We're good. What What was your thought on lot thoughts on the, the 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 sleep show? I was going to call it the S show, but I think the sleep show. Let's keep the show PG. What was your thoughts on last night's wonderful masterclass from um, Chelsea and <sighs> Liverpool? Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it was it was pretty dire to be honest, mate. Um, I think it's well summed, summed up by everything I said to you guys, guys um, in, in the, the chat at time, time when, when it was nil nil. nil. It's nil, 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 we're going to waste 45 more minutes, minutes of our life and it's going to end nil, nil, we're all going to keep watching, keep watching. And we all did keep, 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 keep watching, we all wasted another, we all wasted another, another 45, 45 minutes, minutes of our life. life. And there you go. Um, there you go. Chelsea could have been outside. Chelsea could have been outside. Probably should have been outside, been outside, after, been outside after about and, twenty minutes. You know, and thankfully you know, Chelsea. Thankfully Chelsea. Haven't had a striker since today. Haven't had a striker since today. You know, they couldn't put the ball in the net. You know, they couldn't put the ball in the net. Nonetheless, like nonetheless, you do have to say. You know, it was. You do have to say. It was. It was a drab show. Really kind of summed up where they have really kind of summed up where they have been. Yeah, both of you got that prediction absolutely horrifically wrong. I mean, the chat one nil Chelsea, two one Liverpool. It was for about thirty seconds, so I was closer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> give me that. I give you that. You did. You did get a goal. It didn't count in the end. But um, uh, such oh, is the such. Is, for you, Mark, I just want to throw this to you about Liverpool in general. Obviously, we've got the big game coming up at Anfield: Arsenal versus Liverpool. The game that the pundits are saying is going to decide the title. Carragher's like, oh, so I'm going to lose at Anfield. And I'm just like, Carragher, shut your mouth and do your job. <laughs> uh, stop speculating on stuff. But um, it's been it's been a really weird season. Uh, you guys have really been the footballing equivalent of Humpty Dumpty. You keep falling down off that bloody wall and getting back up again. But it's just like, every time you get back up, there's a bigger crack forming <laughs> because you just keep falling. And it's just like, the pieces are just not coming together. But for you, oh, how do you sum it up and, and what needs to happen? And on that note, is Jürgen's job under threat now? Um, it, it's been a bad season. Um, you know, the, the, there's no denying it. We're eighth in the league at this stage. It's not good enough. Um, and we expect better. I, I, think, I think when we didn't sign anyone in January, and I think going into January... Liverpool fans knew that this this could only be fixed in the transfer window. The, the majority of us, I think, we, we, we know that th there needs to be a big overhaul, there needs to be a big spend, there needs to be a handful of players leaving, a handful of players coming in, and that's going to solve the problems, or at least start to solve the problems. When you ask the question, who out there currently, given £300 million to spend at Liverpool, 
would be able to do a better job than Jurgen Klopp? I still think the answer is no one. So on that basis, you know, he's earned the the right to be there. He's self-aware enough himself that he's not there based on his past successes, or on his present performance, but past successes, which shows the level of humility. He has a level of hunger to want to continue to be there. And I have question marks about every other potential replacement. Um, so with that being said, if money's going to be spent in the summer and the club are going to back a, a, a new dawn, so it, so it be said, then I'm quite happy that new dawn being with Jurgen Klopp. I think at this stage, we've had a couple of opportunities to fire him. If we was going to, we would have probably done it by now. You know, when we was in the bottom half of the table in January, um, would have been a, a, a good time to do that if you felt the need to, to do that. Things have not necessarily improved, but, you know, he's also shown still that even in his worst season, he can beat Man United by more goals than any um, team in the history of football can beat Man United by. So, um, you know, there's, there, there's still that, um, even in our worst season. So, so yeah, look, I think, you know, quick, quick rundown. Nagelsmann showed an experience at, at Bayern, and I think there's question marks around his ability at the top level to handle big players, big dressing rooms, and big expectations. Liverpool have all three. I'm not sure Nagelsmann is ready to handle that. I'm not sure he's learned. I'm not sure he... I, I think he wants to be one of the guys, and I don't think Thomas Muller and Robert Lewandowski and, you know, them big superstars that were and are currently at Bayern are looking for a brother um, who likes to come in on a wheelies to training and, you know, leave his wife for 15 years for, you know, a 29-year-old, you know, model. Um, so, so yeah, I, th I, think, I think in that regard, um, you know, that's my feelings regarding Nagelsmann. You've heard the rest. Zidane, France, job, great manager, but France's job is his dream and, you know, no point starting a project that you can't complete. Tuchel now has a job. Pochettino, again, there's question marks based on his past successes, um, but would be probably the best. Uh, Champions League final. Um, won the French League with PSG. A um, couple of French Cups, um, you know. But, but yeah. <laughs> But yeah, there's enough question marks around him as to is he going to do a better job than Klopp would, um, and therefore I, I I I just I don't see a candidate that I look at and I think on every level this guy would out, out outdo Jurgen Klopp moving forward. So therefore I think we can forgive the the the, the trauma that is going to be this season. It's likely we'll finish outside of the top four and we we rebuild from where we are. Mad. I mean, it's really strange to say, but as bad as your season has been, it's still a better season than Tottenham's, even though they're in the top four. True. Isn't that <laughs> ironic? Yeah, Tottenham are just a gift that keeps on giving. Even when it's not their turn to give, they still find a way. Ah, well, speaking about Tiny Tots, Arsenal, we're doing well. <laughs> still <laughs> top of the table. <laughs> wow. Um, I think what the, the this last set of fixtures have really kind of highlighted for me, especially, is the importance of utilising the squad. And it's still a thing I think Arteta hasn't quite fully grasped and mastered. I think he's still working out how best to rotate players in. I've been very happy with um, Rob Holding coming in, mm. doing a job. He, you know, he keep the game simple for him and he, he can do a job. The weekend, we're just going to be praying. Thoughts and prayers for Arsenal Football Club, please. If you're an Arsenal fan out there, pray. If you're a Liverpool fan out there, um, also pray right. <laughs> for, for not a heavy defeat at home. Just accept the L and move on. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think squad utilization is important. How impressed have you been with, with Rob coming in and how he's performed? And obviously the other players like, you know, Fabio Vieira getting minutes off the bench. Um, obviously Tierney being rotated in now and getting showing what he can do as a left back rotation option. I think, I think holding like, holding never let us down. Only, the only one game holding let us down last season was that top. Only game. one game. <laughs> I mean, that's the what? biggest game to let your team down in. I'm sorry. Only what it could, it, it, if he could let us down in any other game, but that's the one game we don't. You don't go barging into Son. And, and, and there's another game this season where he was very shaky against Haaland at um, the FA Cup game. He, was, he, he got me worried. He got taken off at half time. He got yeah. booked. But that's Haaland, yeah. But, um, but Haaland didn't score. Mm. Did his job. 
Just messing it was it was, was car crash. I, 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 I feel like holding holding to like a utility player for us. Like he, he doesn't play a lot of matches, doesn't moan, doesn't complain. When he when he has to play, he just does his job. Mm. So to be fair, he's been, he hasn't played a lot of matches this season. So the manager gave him a chance now, and he's doing doing it's doing well. Question for you, Marcus: Rob Holding or Joe Gomez? Who do you have in your backline? Um, none of them. If I can. Um, <laughs> <laughs> No, you have to pick one. You have to pick one. You know, it, if it comes to it, um, you know, it's like picking, you know, which one of the two people I would hate the most, um, so or would hate the least. So I, I'd probably go Rob Holding just about because obviously as a Liverpool fan, watching Joe Gomez play at any position for us at any time is quite tragic. Um, you know, which is such a shame considering how much potential he had before his injuries or seemed to have, but you know, he's never lived up to it. And in all honesty, he, he is a liability almost every time he plays these days. So, um, but that's telling you something if I'm taking Arsenal's fourth choice center back over, um, Joe Gomez, but here we are. This is fourth choice. He's fourth choice. I think yep. he's yep. fifth so, or sixth, yep. you know, oh, you he's fifth six. or sixth. Oh, hold hold in. in. Yeah. It's Gabriel Saliba. Yeah. Kivior. He goes, well, well, hold Tommy this, Assi. Well, well, no, no, oh, sorry, oh, hold on, oh, wait. Oh, stop, oh, stop, oh, stop, oh, stop. Oh, stop. Oh, I, I, let, me, let me do it right, let me do it right. It's, uh, it's Gabriel Saliba, Ben White, mm-hmm. Tommy Assi, Kivio, Rob Holden. How is it Kivio's not starting ahead of Ben? Is, he, is the English not, not so good? Ah. English not so good. He's like that guy from Ted Lasso. But he just he lets it all hang out on the pitch. Yeah, all his life. <laughs> life is football. There you go, man. <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm happy. Question for you, yo. Since you guys can't buy a goal scorer, mm. I'm not going to talk about the second coming of Gabriel Jesus. I'm so happy that he's back. I'm so glad he didn't go to either of your teams. You know, I know you were sniffing around he him. Was sniffing hard. I'm glad he turned you guys down. He he, he smelt the BS coming from a mile off. Now I enjoyed in that that joke of a club, Leandro Trossard. It, it, is it a safe bet to say that he is in contention for signing of the season? I'd say so. I mean, he looks like what what what's actually. I think someone said that, and and I watched the highlights since he's been at your club at um, since since January. It almost looks like he's been an Arsenal player for his whole entire life. He's just slotted in really, really well. Like there was no kind of worry that he was ever going to really fit in. He's just slotted in perfect puzzle piece and just gone boom. Thing taken away from there, you better, you better I think it was twenty million for him or something like that, or that no, was a little bit more. Either it's way, more, yeah. it was way less than what we play for many of our players anyway. So considering he's just slotted in like the perfect. I don't want to say it, but you know. I'm not going to say numbers because I'm not very good at maths. I'll make my nose bleed. Three trussards for one metric. Nosebleed, nosebleed. Yeah. But yeah, like he's he's just slotted in beautifully. Like seems like he was. He's almost as if he's been at your club forever. He looks like an Arsenal player. He looks like he's probably, and he probably was an Arsenal player even when he was at Brighton, you know. And Trossard's a, I mean, with his attributes, that uh, with what you want as an Arsenal, every every club has a player where he's a Man United player, he's a Liverpool player, he's a City player, he's a Chelsea player, he's an Arsenal player. He's just not playing for Arsenal right now. He wouldn't, it wouldn't have worked if if, if, if that was the case. He wouldn't have slotted in so well as way. Well. I'm probably giving, I'm probably waxing the record a bit too much, but he's he's just because. Like you're still very much top of the table, if not more so than when he's come in. I didn't know he was as good. Like for me, I get what you're saying about he looks like an Arsenal player, but I didn't see this. I knew he was good. I knew I knew he would do a job for us, but I didn't see this. His touch on the ball, his his, his movement off the ball, his 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 de- his delivery, his decision making. Like I said, it's it's like it's like the second coming of as as Alexander Kleb. It was crying with for, end product. It was crying for another move. That's what it was. It was crying for that next level to come in and be like, you know, every most players, like, you know, from in the past, when a bigger club has bought them, like, you know, from, from Man United, Chelsea, not Arsenal, Chelsea, but Man United, Arsenal, Liverpool, other ones, when as soon as they go there, they stay slot in and it's like, you were the player that we've always wanted. We just never know, we just never seen it. You can go, you can go back and look and be like, you fit in perfectly. Like how, you know, Chelsea, Lampard was a Chelsea player from way back, from their transfer to to from West Ham. Trossard was a clearly a player for you. Marcus will find the player that they bought from a smaller club. And he's like, you're a Liverpool player. You just, Jota. Just, Jota. 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 There. Jota, there you go. He's a Liverpool mm. player. Yeah. Just didn't know it. Yeah. So yeah, he's signing of a season for what, six months? Very much and so. 
very much been pressed and jealous in it. I hate it. <laughs> I, 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 when you first came to Arsenal, everyone was saying he's not going to play a lot. He's not going to get a lot of minutes. He's going to be a squad player. He's he done more than that. He's a starter for me he's now. A baller, man. Hundred percent. Just as a baller. He, he don't know who. The thing is now, Arteta's got a big problem. Who does he start and who does he drop? You got to start Saka. Got to start Martinelli. He has to so, start. So, so who? So, and you got to start Gabriel to this is back in form now. So who does he drop? And wait, and you can't play all four of them in the same team. That, that's a good problem to have, though. Hundred percent. It's a good problem. You, like problem. you, you want to have those kind of issues and those sort of mm. um, you know moments of contention because that's that's what's a good sign of the strength in your, mm. your squad and the strength of your team. But yeah, let's look ahead to the weekend's fixtures. Obviously, we've got the big game coming up: Liverpool versus Arsenal. Matthew, what's your prediction for that match? Uh I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna cancel out. I see a one-one. Oof, Craig, two one Arsenal. Marcus, three three one Arsenal. Oh, that's Oof. very nice. Every- I'm going for an Arsenal win as well. I think 3-0. Um, nice and easy, nice and simple. Um, Leeds versus Crystal Palace at Ellen Road. I'll start with you, Mark. What's your bet for that game? Leeds Palace. Leeds Palace on Sunday. 1-1. One, one, one. One. Ooh, Craig. 2-1 two, one, two, one Leeds. 2-1 two, Palace. 3-1 Palace. <laughs> I just like three one. <laughs> it's my scoreline for the week. Every game three one three one. Uh, Southampton Man City. Mark, what's your bet? Three one Southampton. Southampton. Ooh. You know, I was just thinking that because they turn they turn they, they, up. They beat them in the cup. They turn it? up against City. They yeah. really do. What's your bet? Um, one one. One one. Two two. Desmond. <laughs> three, one, three one. Man City. Keep it consistent. Leicester versus Bournemouth. Craig. Who you got? Um, Leic- uh, I think it's going to be a 2 1 win, Leicester. Leicester at home, 2 1 win. They need a win because they're in the bottom three. So 2 0 Leicester. 2 0 Leicester. Mark, Leicester, Bournemouth. 1 0 Leicester. I am going for 2 1 Bournemouth. Cutting okay. against the grain because okay. we can. <laughs> Tiny Tots versus Brighton, Craig. At, at uh, the new White Hart Lane. 3 2 Brighton. Oof. 2 0 Brighton. 2 0 Brighton, Mark. 2-1 two, two, one, Brighton. Two, one, Brighton. Oh, I'm going to go 2-2 two, two, draw. There's a moment. And Harry Kane to score the first goal. Wolves versus Chelsea. Don't care. <laughs> Craig. <laughs> Come back to that, that one. <laughs> Sam Molyneux. 1-1. One, 1-1. One. One, one. Mark. 1-0 one, Chelsea. Matthew. 2-1 Chelsea. 3-1 Wolves. <laughs> Fulham. <laughs> He's a that to Okay. Fulham versus West Ham on Saturday at Craven Cottage. All right, I'm gonna take a leaf out of your book. 3 1 Fulham. Okay. 1 0 Fulham. 1 0 Fulham. 3 1 Fulham. Mark. 1 0 West Ham. 2 0 West Ham. All right. And we've got three more games to go. Brentford versus Newcastle at Brentford. Craig, you'll probably be there, won't you, for that game? No, okay. Um, Three to Newcastle. Oh, three to Newcastle. One, 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 one. One, one. And Mark? One, one, one. Ooh. Nottingham Forest versus Aston Villa. Aston Villa at home. Mark, how do you see that one going? Do you know Aston Villa? Ooh, Craig. 2-1 Aston Villa. 2-1 Aston Villa. 3-1 Nottingham Forest. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when, hey, when these score lines bag, I got it first. You might do the ACO, boy. <laughs> uh, Man United versus Everton. Early kickoff on Saturday at Old Trafford. Matthew. 2-0 Man United. 2-0 Man United. 2-2. 2-2. Mark? 1-0 one, 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 Everton. Everton's got a good record at Old Trafford, you know. They, they do. do. They do. That's why I'm thinking 2 2 because last season, I think they drew them last season, didn't they? Yeah. Mm. Ra- from, uh, they, oh, did they drew them last season? Tough one. I'm going to say 3 1, don't you? Uh, <laughs> lost the core. I'm going to go 3 1 Man United. Okay. Fair enough. That's it, really. That's it. That's it. That's it. Man United are currently enjoying 0 0 against Brentford. Uh, good luck uh, in that game. Uh, hopefully, it goes the way of the team that wears red. Normally, but I'm not wearing red today. Hint, hint, wink, wink. If you know <laughs> what I mean. Um, May not at home. If you didn't understand what I was trying to say. Come on, Brentford. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's. I mean, we had some had some fun with last week's predictions and games. Uh, definitely didn't. Some of those calls were definitely well off the mark. But you know, we live and we learn. 
Mm. Then we'll learn and we'll see we'll see next week whether the three one is the scoreline to match. <laughs> um in closing, because it has been quite a a phenomenal week of upturn, upheaval, shock results, poor officiating, and just Chelsea being at Chelsea. What is what's the next big managerial shock are you expecting for the end of the season? And that could be either a manager leaving a club or a manager joining a club. I'll start with you, Craig. What's your next big manager you were shocked for this season? I think Jurgen Klopp's got to be careful, you know. Ooh. I really feel that if he continues the way they continue and they're not winning matches, he could be the next one to go. I love that, you know. Jurgen Klopp's got to be careful. It's a gun talk there. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to be careful walking around I've Merseyside. Been... <laughs> <laughs> you might lose your glass. He doesn't wear them anymore. You might lose your hat. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew, what's your next big potential shock come the end of the season? I don't know what's going to happen with this guy, but I'm watching him very close because I think it'll be there. This will be the second season in the league, right? Or the thirds. I'm watching Thomas Frank. This is their second year. I'm watching Thomas Frank. I don't know what's going to happen with this brother, but I'm saying I'm watching him. Or oh, you think he's going to get a move up? I think some, there's going to be something in, something is going to be in for him. It's going to be something that it's going to be very difficult to, not necessarily pass up, but difficult to ignore. Would you take him at Chelsea? <sighs> For if for the last ten games, I would, but for as not long, going forward, he's got a bit more bite than Tuchel. But I don't know if he's a he's he has more of a, a ceiling with him. But I do think he's got like really good potential with him of working with smaller squads, managing players like pick and mix, bargain buys. I love how you said smaller squads, and I was like, you you do realize that you literally have an NFL team. We do have an NFL in team. the Premier League. But he he could he could bring Tony to Chelsea. If you like he's a striker after all. I don't know. Ten years, five years down the line, I might change my mind. But um, I just think something's going to happen with him. I don't know what. I think something's going to happen. Right. And Mark, what's your? What would you say is your managerial shock that you're expecting next? Yeah, well, I, I don't have a shock, but one thing I will say is that I'm absolutely certain that Chelsea will have one, maybe two managers before Jurgen Klopp leaves Liverpool. So. One maybe two. We'll put that one out there. Hey, if it uh, works. <laughs> It, it worked for Roman, but I don't think Bowley and the guys have quite figured out what it's all about in terms of the ma- manager America. But we'll see. We'll I mean, see. there's lots of talk. We'll see who does get the job. Whether you you run the block, spin the block, and bring back Frank, or you you tap up Jose and say, "Come home, fella, one more time, one last dance to see how it goes." Um, or if you try something a bit more adventurous, you can go for like a Luis Enrique, or La- you know, or Gerard. Nah, Joe will never go to the Joe will it's never go to Chelsea. It's an option. Nah. He nearly Joe, did. It's an option. He nearly did, but it he never happened did. twice. Why, it never happened. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't see Joe being a Chelsea manager. Nah. Yeah. It tainted, it was tainted Liverpool in the history legacy. I didn't think, I didn't think Rafa That's would go. Taint, yeah. I didn't think Rafa would go, but he yeah. did. Mark, for you, what, who who are you expecting to get in the Chelsea hot seat as our final point? I'm Nigelsman. Nigelsman. Well, he does fit Chelsea, you know, questionable morals. Young is exciting and definitely disposable if things don't work out. So I feel like that is the right fit for your club. And on that note, we'll call it a night. Thank you all for listening. Let us know what you think about the weekend's fixtures ahead. Do you think we'll see plenty of three ones or am I living on cloud cuckoo land? (laughs) Who knows? Who knows? Will Rogers get the hot seat and be back at the Blues? Chelsea this time. Or will he end up in Lily Whites and be depressed for a season and a half? before getting a pay out. (laughs) We'll find out in next week's edition of Premier League Gone Mad. That's us signing out. Peace. Peace.